Hello and welcome to another Daily Recap. Today is Wednesday, August 28th. It's about 10 minutes before 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern. So the levels on the board today kind of spread out. You may have noticed the last couple days, the gap from the previous day really didn't work as intended. I think it's losing its importance. I mean, they're still hanging around where they close. I mean, it's six, uh, 561.53 right now. The close is pretty much around 561.50. And it's, in my opinion, maybe kind of losing its importance. They need to either break out or bust down. I've mentioned this before. Uh, it was in the email that I sent out a few days ago that if they can get above 563.40 and close multiple hour candles, hourly candles above that, they're probably likely headed up to test the former all time highs. Um, but if they get a lot lower than this, say, start closing hourly candles below like 554 or so, then that might not be the uh, the case, but right, they're kind of in this range at this point. I don't want to risk that gap from yesterday for a level today, but you know you can put it on here five sixty one fifty. Kind of keep an eye on it, and I'm just not willing to to trade it. But if they get to any of these levels here, they're likely to hit some resistance before they go higher. Same thing down here, likely to hit some support if they get lower. So that's my plan. Come back to this chart after the market closes to analyze whatever happened and talk about any trades that may have resulted from the SPY hitting these levels of support and resistance. Catch you on the other side. It's a few minutes in front of eight o'clock. We had a decent down day today. So we'll have to do some explaining to see, to, to show you what happened today. Two levels from the morning were hit. I traded a third level down here and one down here that weren't on the board this morning. It'll make sense when you watch the video. So playing by the rules, what would you have done? So first of all, I want to talk about the gap left over from yesterday. Did not put that level on the board. Kind of interesting that, so that would have been basically 561.50. is what I would have put it at. And look at this at uh, 943, they had a high of 561. So a few, a high of 561.50, I guess I should finish that sentence. So a couple minutes before my start time, and that would have been a nice way to go short. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I just want to point out that the gap, uh, they got below the gap and stayed below. So coming down into these levels, so 559.50, operating level 559.55. Let's add five cents to it. Can't get it exactly, but you get the idea. Because there's more than enough for a base hit bounce. They went as high as this neighborhood here. So that's five points or so, a little bit more than five points. So that level is done, at least for the long side. You could take a short trade at this for a recycle if they were to come back into it from this point after a certain amount of time. They never did. But the set next level here, so... The operating level, let's see if I can get this adjusted, 558.66 would be the operating level will be 558.71. Let's add five cents to that. So they did not get within what I would consider a, a near miss scenario here. The low was 558.86 on this candle before they took off. I was a little bit concerned. I actually didn't go ahead and buy here. So playing by the rules, you would have the, I'll go ahead and put the fumble threshold where that's at because obviously they did not bounce up here from this, from that trade. So uh, 558.31. So let's just put it right here at 30. Um, so this is what you really don't want to see them get underneath and close certain candles, but they did. That did happen, but where the signal materialized, it was only four and a half points out of the money and then a reversal, and you would have had a base on the reversal. Now, here's the thing. If you're playing by the rules, so you've been out of the money at this point, or sorry, you would have closed this trade out. You would have had a little bit of a fumble, reversal, pretty much washed out. It wouldn't have been too bad, but the point is, this level is still valid for a recycle and enough time had elapsed from here from 1113 when they got out of this level, came back up into it here at 12, right after 12 PM. So that level was 558.66. Well, we're going to adjust it down. So 558.61, we're going to subtract five pennies. So that is a recycle trade right there. While it looks like price is just falling down. I mean, it did fall down through this level. The point is this level is important, you know, how many times? One, two, three, four, at least four times throughout the day. There is another level down here that I actually bought again at. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what I did, then we can watch the video. When I bought two contracts here, kind of expected them to keep going down because of this action here. And they did. So instead of buying four, I just bought two here, planned to buy two more, which I did. They didn't give me, so my entry point is, or sorry, my average entry level somewhere in this neighborhood. They barely gave me a base hit, but I was looking for six points. Actually, I was going to trail some more up thinking after this fall, they're probably going to climb up, but they continued to fall. And unfortunately I was away from my computer and they got, I think within a tick of giving me my profit in this neighborhood here. And I was kind of stubborn, just waited it out and stepped away. When I came back, 
to my computer. They were down here. Let's just watch this and I'll show you what I did. And the point is there was some really good support down here. They didn't get to it. It was down here in this neighborhood. Um, definitely not on the board from this morning. Didn't really expect them to go this low, but I bought again. So I was actually long five and I just let this thing go up and I you know, was able to uh, clear profit of it. I was out of the money quite a bit, but it's been worse. I've, I've had I've been out of the money worse than this before, and you just have to know where support and resistance is. This this was kind of a little unprecedented. I did not expect to see this when I got back, but let's just take a look at what that looked like in real time. This has sped up quite a bit, so I may just pause this as soon as it hits the level and the trade is entered. I bought four right there. So okay, yeah. So I bought four. I'm taking three off just in time. And obviously in real time, it gave me a minute or more before I this is I'm doing this within seconds. Once the the trade was triggered. This was an automatic trade. So in other words, as soon as the SPY hit 559.55, I bought at the market in the E-minis. Long four. I was going to take three off. Thought I could trail the remaining contract higher. And I think I did a little bit. Let's see. No, I, when it sought me out, I was actually a tick or so below. So, um, you know, the net three something points with my four contracts. But that's a base hit. You know, playing by the rules. All right, so here is this one. Next level coming into play. So we've already talked about this little near miss here. It wasn't a classic near miss, but sure enough, it went, they sliced through it. So I bought two. I bought two down here. So my four is in the middle. And that's kind of waited this thing out. So we can watch this play out. You can pay the you can pay attention to the time in the clock in the lower right hand corner. Maybe I'll scrub ahead here. And once or twice they got up close to my uh, profit target. You'll notice that I'm looking for around six points or so instead of the normal five. And I was going to take just three off of the four contract position and try to trail one more thought. Maybe they can regain this little fall and come back up to at least break even or not break even like from where they open in the morning and higher because I mean, with a bullish, this is just my opinion here, but with the way they've been acting, it's like they're wanting to approach the all time highs again. So being on the long side was perfectly okay with me today. And I was even willing to buy lower as you can see. So let's move ahead here. There's the, I really should have just jumped out here and took some profit, but I didn't, and it was probably not smart. I'm not advocating doing what I did today because it was not fun being out of the money, especially when I came back from my computer. I, off the screen, wasn't at the computer when this happened, and I, and I see this. I'm like, oh, shoot. But, well, oh, wait a minute. Let me back up because you see I actually bought one. Remember, there's support down here, so I'm long four, and you see I bought one more at the market. So now I'm long five, which reduced my average entry price down here somewhere. And I'm just waiting this thing out. And yeah, it's not fun to see this, but... Um, you know, just because they're down here doesn't mean they're going to continue down here. It's not as common to see a trend day down, especially when there's a lot of bulls out there trying to fight this thing and push this thing higher, which is still very possible. They're going to push higher to approach or at least test the all time highs. And there's plenty of people who want to break through and break, you know, like, uh, break out and go higher. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm just mostly just focused on these, these intraday levels, but this one kind of got away from me. Really important support down here. So it just took them some time. And other charts are telling a different story or confirming the story essentially. So here I'm now back in the money. I'm going to take three off, getting toward the end of the day at this point, hoping that maybe there's going to get plenty of strength, you know, maybe take a little bit of a breather here, take my three contracts back, trail the other two and go higher. It's not exactly what happened, but I did get the, I did get my three here at least and trail the two up a little bit more. Bring it up to where that happened. You can see for yourself now. Okay. So, you know, I'm just back. I, I kind of jump ahead here a little bit too much. There we go. So I'm not going to touch this. So here they hit the three. Now I'm trailing two and I don't care what happens at this point. I'm just going to let this thing run. And I think that's about as high as it got me on the remaining two contracts, right? Pretty much at the market close. And that was it. And I left the pre or the post market data on just to see what would happen. And they actually fell a little bit farther. So not as strong as I had hoped. I thought they were going to climb higher, but either way, that was uh, not bad. I mean, it's kind of a sloppy way of trading. Playing by, playing by the rules would have ended you a decent profit today, above average. We can take a look at the log and I'll show what that looks like. But doing what I did actually gave me a pretty decent profit today. But So here is the playing by the rules log. You can read the notes. A quick base hit at that first level. A fumble at the next level down here at level one, but a base on that reversal as it kept falling and a base on a recycle when it came back up until you had several options or several opportunities to take a recycle trade on that. So here you go. You gave it back four and a half, but you pulled 12 out. So an above average day, depending on number of contracts you can afford to trade. My trades were interesting. So this is the level that wasn't on the board that I identified in real time. It's up here, but in order, 
I didn't get a full base hit because, you know, I, I took three off and tried to trail one, but stopped me out a tick or so out of the money. So effectively three points on four contracts. This level one was averaged in with the one below it. And with, I loaded up basically up to five contracts and that was my uh, net gain of 13 points or so. So that's what I ended. It was actually $3,500. So really in between here before commissions. So that's it for today. Pretty interesting day and a couple more days in the week. Well, since we have Labor Day on Monday, well, anything can happen, but you know, typically a Friday before holiday like that is going to be kind of slow, but they're at a, such an important place, important time. They may try to do something the next couple of days before the holiday. We'll see. So come back tomorrow morning, new levels, new game plan, and uh, do this all over again. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something today. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Catch you in tomorrow's video.